man, I just ain't been able to sort of like recover from that fight. <laughs> I tell you what, there was other fights on after, and um, the guys were watching them, Jay Dills, Errol, and Apollo, and I was trying to watch it, but I was just sort of like in and out of the fight, I, and for the most part, I just couldn't watch the rest of them, because I just couldn't get that fight out of my head, and it's still in my head now, and um, <laughs> I've sent... um a few copies of the fight in the inbox in case you ain't seen it and I don't think you you might not think it's worth seeing but you're wrong you're 100% wrong <laughs> you need to go see it you need you need you need that's if any fight you need to watch you need to watch it so the links in the description box and um, the scorecards I'm going to put the scorecards I won't tell you what the scorecards were you know they had Lebedev up, got that in there. You can see exactly how somebody, one judge, tallied it up. Amazing stuff, man. Amazing stuff. You know, Lebedev, from the opening bell, couldn't block the straight right. That was immediately apparent, you know. Whew. Jones is just a big guy. Must be about 6'4". He started as a welterweight, believe it or not. He started as a welterweight. And his his counter punching skills and his bravery and his his determination, the way he, he was unflinchingly not intimidated by Lebedev's power. And Lebedev does have power, and he just wasn't perturbed by that. That that's quite amazing, you know. To be a boxer is like when you think how some of them think, how they get to that point of clarity. Of who they are, their abilities and their awareness of what they can do. It's just an amazing raw and even though Lebedev was grotesquely injured, it's just a raw and beautiful sport, man. It was like, man, that I know I know I know probably you know, if it sounds like I'm just going on too too much to describe a boxing fight. But man, man that shit was just brilliant. It was just brilliant, you know. Wow, Lebedev was in the fight, like man, like when it looked like Jones was losing his legs, you know, Lebedev was right there and he was hitting, he was landing, he was landing, and it didn't seem like Lebedev was perturbed by the eye. You know, his eye was fucked up. His other eye started to swell slightly. But he it was swollen. There was blood coming out of it. I think Errol um, pointed out there was blood going into his eye. And it was just savage, man. It was savage. You know, Jones was throwing his uppercut into the body, man. This short uppercut. And... You could see the damage it done to Lebedev. There were stages where Lebedev was just a, a powerful, brave warrior, but his legs were going, and it was the body shots just doing him in, just doing him in. But he kept coming, he kept coming. There was a, there was a stage where I was wondering, is Lebedev going to stop? Jones, when he was teeing off with shots, but Jones didn't stagger. He... he he felt the punches, he obviously felt the punches, but he didn't even wobble, man. Like, um, Bakayard in Jamaica, and call man like that, Doppy, because nothing frightened him, you know. Nothing, not, nothing seemed to fucking fuck with him. Doppy. You know what I mean? That's a terminology for, you know what I mean, ghost. <laughs> wow telling you man this this one needed a second a second breakdown man you know he done what Marco Hook couldn't do and even Steve Cunningham and that's push Dennis Lebedev back for periods for lengthy periods of the fight he pushed him back great tactic against someone like Lebedev because Lebedev likes to you know dominate the fight 
dominate his opponent and tee off on them. You get what I'm saying? And man, if you haven't heard of Guillermo Jones, it's time you started learning something, you know. <laughs> There's no doubt about that. And I'm going to read out the comments that people wrote on our post-fight video, which was chaired by me, Jay Dills, Apollo, and of course Errol. And PNC King points out what I just said. Guillermo Jones started his career at 147. Amazing. Big Fly Swoosh says, I'm all for a good beating, but this is the first one I've seen that left a sour taste in my mouth. The negligence of the referee, doctor, and especially Lebedev's corner made me a little ashamed of boxing. I found it shameful that Lebedev had to pretty much quit in the middle of the round because no one would look out for him. Someone has to be the voice of reason. You can't let a fighter die or suffer life-altering injuries just because he is willing to. Great point. Great point. Great point. They should have pulled him out. Errol was saying so all throughout the fight, you know. There wasn't no ordinary injuries. There wasn't no ordinary beating he was taking there, you know. I agree with that. Jab, jab, grab. One, two, three. If that fight was anywhere barring Russia Lebedev would have been stopped and correct you are sir you know he would have been you know his cornerman and the crowd they was engrossed so engrossed into the fight they didn't want to give it up you could see the disappointment on Klitschko's face and, and Valuer's face who are two fighters who was watching the fight his countrymen probably his friends too and you can see the disappointments on their faces when Lebedev lost it meant that much to them you know that Russian pride Man of Onyx 77 says that's what you get for fighting old men God bless Roy Jones Jr. <laughs> I suppose what he's referring to there is that Lebedev picked off the carcasses of Roy Jones knocking him out and soundly outpointing James Tony, whose great chin and the last remains of his great defence helped him stay erect for the whole 12 rounds when he took a pounding Mr. Jess Hook says using that pack of ice on the swelling kind of reminded me of the Tyson Douglas fight according to Beats where was the end swell well where was the end swell they had this big packet of ice and um, I suppose to a generic observer, you might ask, well, what's wrong with that? It's ice. It will bring down the swelling, won't it? Well, the thing is, the end swell is specifically designed to control swellings. And as Errol pointed out, there was no stool. There was no stool there for Lebedev. Maybe that's how they plan to negotiate their fight plan without a stool. But we have to ask: even if you're not going to use the stool, should a stool be? Should it? Should should you? Should you not be required to have a stool and an end swell? Shouldn't these things be sort of like um, mandatory that? they're used or at least they're available to the cornerman to the seconds Mr. Jess Hook says swelling was gruesome like Holyfield versus Ruckman referring to the hematoma that Ruckman had in his eye after he fought Holyfield and was stopped with a gross swelling man Blood Boxing says, man, what a nasty fight. Them guys went at it. Neither will last fighting like that. Lebedev face looked like silly putty. What the fuck? One hell of a brawl. Yes, it was. It was hardcore. 78 Sports TV says, Errol is hyped. 
<laughs> yeah, he was hyped, man, because <laughs> he was witnessing one of the battles, one of the one of the best battles that we've all seen. Yes, indeed. <laughs> Darrell Carter, Rocky IV, Ivan Drago, Beast Fight. Yes.